Hello everyone. Welcome back on Agri Adventures. Uh, tonight it's another live online uh, wine testing experience uh, here on the Agri Adventures platform. Uh, I've been testing for the last three experiences. Um, I've been testing natural wines. So they, uh, I had um, Pinot Noir, I had a Montepulciano, it was a Grenache. Especially the last one, it was really a interesting uh, Pinot Noir, uh, considering it was natural and filtered 2019. So yeah, it was fun. And for this experience instead, I decided to do not go natural. Uh, when I mean natural, uh, I don't mean that I, other wines are made in a different way or are, are not natural. Uh, what I mean is that they have uh, low or none uh, intervention in the winemaking process. And that's obviously, it changes a lot. So uh, this week I decided instead to go with a variety that I don't know, uh, small producers that you can find in the shops over here in Adelaide, and they are generally really, really tiny. And uh, for tonight, what I'm gonna taste, it's uh, uh, the variety, it's Prieto uh, Picudo. And uh, it's, uh, that's interesting because it's not the first time that I've seen speaking about La Resistance, the other time I had this, it was uh, uh, from uh, a wine from uh, Barossa Valley. And this time, this wine, it's gonna be from Clare Valley. We are speaking about a wine that is defined to be Riverland. Now the producer, it's Matriarch and Rogue. And I don't know if you can see properly or playing always a little bit with the camera and trying to get the focus around. And let's read what is written over here. Ah, uh, well, it's a Spanish variety, good to know. It's uh, defined black cherry, chocolate, pepper, earthy. So keep in mind, because we will see if it's like that, then it's 50% uh, wool bunch fermented, three weeks, wow, of skin content. Okay, so it's not common. For these markets, they try to be uh, careful with the skin content. Hand plunged, bask press, maturation in older oaks, not fining, no filtration. So who knows, it has understanding of, of uh, what it means fining. Please pull your hands up because I always found this interesting. What's a fining? What do you mean? Or do you, what do you do when you find a wine? So, so in terms of wine testing experience, we have a, a 19 degrees at the moment, which is probably slightly cooler for this wine because uh, and now I'm gonna trick myself because obviously this time when I do the wine testing, I know what's the degree, generally I don't. So we're speaking about a 14.5% of alcohol, three weeks of, uh, um, maceration on the skin, and then we have 2019. So I already have some ideas. I'm gonna have a kind of fruitiness, full body. I'm gonna have a sort of young Shiraz style, but it's, I'm fine and I'm filtered. So let's see. Where is coming from? Uh, Leon region for what I've seen, Wikipedia at the moment. So Prieto Picudo is one of the major wine grapes from Spain, Tierra de Leon, okay. Northeast of Spain, as you can see over here, it's the river uh, Chea, and uh, it's the, the river is where majority of these uh, grapes it's, uh, is grown. Okay, so Prieto Picudo wines, a unique character and taste. What we see? Ah, the grapes that they have over there are Mencia, Prieto Picudo, and Tempranillo. Many of us, we know Tempranillo over here. Um, but without a doubt, the particularity of the length, uh, that the difference of the other wine regions in the world, it's absolutely this guy. So the, uh, it is native of the Chia Sia um, River bank. And then they have 
3,000, sorry, yeah, 3,000 acres, no, hectares, sorry, hectares of uh, um, vineyard. Okay, Prieto Piguto grapes are distinguished by this uh, tight cluster and very shape, oval, and finished in tip. Let's have a look. The producer, what do you think? I don't know much about Spanish wine, so I'm completely open. In this case, this is a wine produced in Australia. So it's a Spanish variety, really unknown, like to me, I never hear about. And um, it's, uh, I, I did a quick search, quick Google online, didn't find any video uh, speak, speaks about uh, the Prieto Picudo. So, Mali Spanish. So it's, it's not really known um, variety. Located in Clare Valley, and uh, we are speaking, as I said before, matriarch and row. What do you think about the label? It's interesting. You would like to know why they call it uh, Rogues of the Resistance. Maybe because they um, the war Napoleon against um, Spanish, so Spanish and French, they uh, they put together, they forced to fight against uh, Portuguese, then the French defeated the Spanish after they won against the Portuguese, and then because the French were fighting, Napoleon was trying to get the war uh, invading the peninsula, and at that point, Spanish, Portuguese, and English, they fought against French and Napoleon in the peninsula. Maybe this could be the name. Maybe this could be the, uh, this could be the, uh, this is could be the name. We're looking at the website, Matriarch and Rogue. Okay, first thing first, we have a lovely lady. That's the wine maker and as the, um, I think he's the, the business director. Uh, Marnie Roberts, okay. She's coming from um, Riverland. So we, we say the matriarch and rogue is, uh, um, is about three of her loves, which is a family, the home in Clare Valley, and alternative alternative varieties slash winemaking. So that's interesting because it means that we're gonna have different varieties than one we used to, usual. And uh, alternative wine make is, is something that makes my life more interesting. Okay, so why the name of the business? It's under the name of five sisters who uh, led the family. And the rogue is the name of her husband. The matriarch and rogue range has been developed directly in the third core value, alternative varieties and winemaking. I want people to be tempted and able to try something they usually won't, to go outside of their comfort zone and taste something that is available to them at a realistic price point that allows the risk of why I like it or I want it. Thank you very much, Marnie, because that's a really interesting challenge. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna find something interesting. Okay, so if you are, we are speaking about uh, 744. Let's open, let's crack open this wine. I just have to tell you that it's fun because uh, in the last month, I've been opening only wines under cork. So, it's to me now weird because I've been opening wine under cork for a full month. Well, four sessions or four bottles of wine. And uh, this is the first one that I'm going to open the test under a screw cup. Bad habit. I know, but it's nice to do anyway. Wow. Okay. Well, as usual, the sort of... I, I can't call uh, uh, acid lactic, but it, it smells kind of strawberry uh, yogurt, which is generally what, when you open a bottle and the screw cup has this kind of release, is acid that flies out and uh, it's normal. Generally, when you have that smell, you wait a little bit because that is not right yet. It needs to open a little bit. My favorite wine glass. Now we're gonna put a little bit of pudding. Oh, I can see already we have a purple shade with ruby red. I don't know if you had the chance to see it. It's quite dark. 
and I will, as usual, I will get some pictures for you. But yes, that's really purple. I could say even that it's purple red with, with rub ruby shades. But no, 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 that's ruby red with purple. Okay. And uh, wow. Well, we said that is a 14.5. Look at the arches, can, can you see them? That's a lot of glacery, a lot of, wow, how close they are over here. I don't know if it's something you can see. And look how slow they are coming down. Wow, there is a lot of body in here. A lot of body in here, okay? So we're speaking about a young wine, they said tannin, sugar, and acidity. Everything together is gonna to make a full body, fruity, floral, I eat a lip of licorice. That is probably something that is really, really remind uh, Shiraz. They have a chocolate, still not ready. Still, it still need, need have a, um, breathing time you have a plum a little bit you have a cherry you have a chocolate cherry chocolate um i'm gonna wait a second and see if the some tobacco come i uh, come out i'm just gonna have a quick grab a glass of water because i need to raise my palate and i'll be back anyway it's interesting how um like claire it's known uh, to be a white, Riesling white region uh, in, um, in South Australia, but I found many red full body coming from that region that surprised me. Sometimes, you know, at the level of body, then uh, uh, Shiraz from Barossa. Nah. This wine need to have a good opening time. If it's gonna be, um, no, it's not ready. So probably the best thing to do is to uh, wait a bit and um, go back on it when it's ready. So if you're following the uh, live, that is something real and is happening now, which is that I will stop the live now. I will go back when the wine, it will be, to me, it will be ready to be drunk. And uh, it is really cool. See you in a bit. Ciao. We are back uh, live. We are back live um, on uh, Agri Adventures platform and uh, the opening time. Uh, so we are slightly, slightly getting out the milky strawberry uh level the wine have been opened at 7 44 we are 803 so almost 20 minutes so 20 minutes that this wine is sitting in this glass without having been touched and it's still not ready in my opinion you have these black berries a bit of green or oh, maybe you have some uh, green bush berries or um, the classic I don't want to say black currant because everybody used black currant bit of licorice again there was chocolate before now it's licorice well what do you think are we gonna try so for who like wine with body this is so it's not the shirat shirat but it's the same style same characteristic so if you like that style this is okay mm. Okay, this wine, it goes down really well. Mounts with this lively acidity, it is a wine that you drink in a really easy way. It's a 14.5%, so it is a full body red wine. So really nice to drink, goes really well. It go, goes really well on its own. I have to say that as per balance, I'm having salivation which is fine, which is also ask for some food, but the tannin, it's coming now. 
after a bit is, is the first thing is the acidity, but the balance. So it's well balanced wine. This is a wine you can drink on its own with no problems. Uh, it's not going to be the wine that makes you feel uh, heavy. And I don't want to give all this. I'm not doing this because I'm paid for or I'm simply telling you straight away what are my feelings regarding this wine, this variety. It's lovely. It's live, lively. I mean, it could be surprising if you are coming from Europe or if it's you're not used to Rome Valley uh, red wine. But, but the mount, the mount is, fat, is really, really interesting. To me, lacks a little bit in complexity. So it's not a wine that has the complexity at the length that you're gonna have a wine for a while. Like, oh my God, this wine has so much to say. I'm still finding the same smells, the same flavors, still chocolate, a little bit of uh, licorice. And um, that's obviously, it's limiting a little bit its potentiality. But this is also 2019, I mean, and then it's aged in the old barrels. So it's not gonna be uh, not super long, so you don't have that extra complexity. I have to say it does the job. Uh, aging, yes, if you want, you can aging it, you can age it, it's probably gonna get better for complexity. And uh, it does enough tannins and enough acidity to be protected. So don't worry. I may, if I want to do aging for this wine, I may will put a cork on it and I will leave age it a bit longer. Uh, but it drinks already well now and it's just one year old. And um, yeah, it's, it's a good option. You can take it to a friend's house and you're going to say, yay, this is a new variety. Have you never tried it? And then they're going to say, I like the full body wine. So this is not, say, don't worry that it is, it is enough food to, to make you feel it. It's leaving the palate kind of silky. The look of it is, it's correct. I mean, the ruby red with purple shades is what we have, what we said in the beginning. And uh, knows that complexity is harmonic. It is, it says what it is. It's, there is nothing that uh, it goes out, out to the to do to the rails and um, clean the palettes the final part of the palette is also enjoyable obviously it's a lack in complexity and that it comes from many things the aging the the, the, the aging in, in the containers uh, the and I think is also wanted in that way I mean it sounds to me a wine that it was designed to test it out, like to see what the variety could work. So it is not extreme. I mean, it's not extreme at all from like the Pinot Noir that I've been tasting last week or uh, the Grenache or the um, Montepulciano because those wines, they were uh, really not extreme, but you know, there was a hard part. $40 are correct. And um, yeah, compliments for um, our uh, young wine makers. And um, so yeah, I, will I will remember it because first the region, so Riverland, and second the variety. And uh, I won't remember it because it was unique, the taste in my mouth or the smell at my nose but is still something that can you know can be interesting experience yeah and who knows yeah generally with these varieties different varieties who knows what what happened what and in 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 our months in five years so i hope you enjoyed again uh, we will see the next time here on the agri adventures platform for this live online event it may happen next saturday we're gonna taste a coffee Roasted air with air, roasted with air uh, coffee. I want to know more about it. I had an espresso and it was really interesting. Please, wow, oh, this, it, that smells heavily roasted. Have a good weekend. Bye.